randomized phase two study. It was embedded in our larger parent E2906 study. And it was for patients over the age of 60 who were fit for intensive therapy, who had gone into remission after their induction therapy on one of two arms, and had who received two cycles of consolidation treatment and recovered from it. All patients had to maintain their complete remission, that was confirmed, and they were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to a standard observation approach every four weeks for a year, or to a low-dose um, maintenance therapy with decitamine for three days consecutive. The treatment was every four weeks. There were no dose reductions allowed. Patients did have to have recovered their CBC to an ANC of greater than one or platelets greater than 75, so there were some dose delays, but generally well tolerated and went on for one year. It was an exploratory endpoint in our trial, so there were 120 patients who were randomized, but there was no group on our analysis who seemed to do worse with decitabine. We uh, had predominantly intermediate risk patients, and, and about half of them were over the age of 70. So older patients who, at least if they're fit for intensive induction therapy, would be eligible for this. Importantly, 80% of patients on this part of the study had FLT3 testing done and did not have a FLT3 ITD mutation, and they had a strong signal of a survival advantage. So it really looks like the biggest advantage may be, at least in our trial, intermediate risk patients, older adults, fit for therapy, and those who did not have a FLT3 ITD mutation. This was an exploratory study within a large phase three trial. So it was a randomized phase two study we only had 120 patients on it. We'd intended to get 172, but the parent study closed early. So it's a very compelling result, but I can't call it a definitive result. I think it supports the use of maintenance therapy uh, with decitabine, at least for a year in this population. But I do think it needs a confirmatory large trial. It should focus on the FLT3 ITD negative patients. It's quite possible that prolonged therapy more than a year would be helpful. We were obliged to stop at a year because that's what our preliminary data supported at the time. But we're planning to move this forward into a definitive trial, either within a large national study or even outside of that for patients who are in remission and would have been fit for this.